Now in this video, we're going to be looking at growing containers using GSAP. Now, as we scroll down, you can see how this container grows like that. Now, this is not just limited to containers. We can use this code anywhere and on any widget. So here I have this example here using a normal standard container with some stuff inside. Doesn't really matter what's inside it. Or you can actually target to something like this as a desired. You can have a container within a container. Like I said earlier, you can target any widget. So if I scroll down more, you can see that I actually use the same code to target this image over here in this section here. Now in this particular image, I also had put movement on X and I made the opacity going from zero to one. So, but that's using the exact same code. We just added a couple of more features. The cool thing about using this code is that you have micro control on any aspect of the actual animation, as well as how the animation plays out. So the whole easing effect over here, I've just said to linear as you're scrolling up, but you can do easy in out, you know, all that type of good stuff. This isn't hard at all. So let me just show you how to do this effect. So here in the elemental backend, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add three containers. The first and the last ones is just to add space so that you can see the animation working. Obviously, if I did this on the first container right on the top of the page, it's already at the top of the page. So the animation can't exactly work when scrolling up. So here in this example, I'm just gonna do that now quickly. I'm gonna add my first container. I'm gonna make sure that the height is say 100 VH. And then I'm just gonna make sure that there's something in it. So I'm just gonna put in the spacer, just so that it actually shows that container. And then I'm going to duplicate it for the bottom. And then I'm going to put one in the middle, which is going to be the one that's going to showcase this animation. Let me select this container over here. I'm going to make sure that it goes horizontally. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the heading and text on the one side, and I'm going to put an image on the other side. Then once I have that in place, then we can actually put in the code that's going to make this work. So over here, let me just add two containers real quick. It doesn't matter how you stylize this or what's in it, this will work for anything. On the left hand side here, let me just add a heading and some text, maybe actually a button as well while we're here. Maybe put it as a right justify. Then on the left over here, let me just put an image. And then on the left hand side, just make sure that it's centered to the image. Okay, so again, nothing fancy over here. So if we click publish and we see it in the front end, Real simple, nothing fancy going on here, but this is gonna be perfect to showcase the animation. So, now that we have what we want to animate, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the plus sign, we're gonna add the HTML widget, and we're gonna click and drag this to where we would like to target the actual animation. So the next thing you're going to need is if you look in the description of this video, there's going to be a link that's gonna take you to a resource page on my website. So let's just go over to that resource page. Here in the resource page, if we scroll down, you're gonna see there's this code over here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this and then inside the Elementor page builder, we're going to make sure we are in the HTML widget and we are going to paste this code. Now within this code, if I just move this over, you're gonna see that there's going to be a trigger. Now that is going to be what we're going to target to make this animation work. So over here, we have this container to grow. Now that's gonna be the CSS name that we're gonna be using inside the container that we want to animate. So if I copy this over, just make sure you don't copy the dot in front of it. And I say copy. It's to say I want to target this whole text section over here. I'd click on this container, I'd go to advanced, and I'd paste that name into the CSS classes. Once we have that, if I click publish and I scroll down, you can see now that animation is starting to work. Now this does work in mobile as well. So you don't have to worry about that. Now let's just say you want this effect to actually end say in the middle of the page. If we go back into the HTML widget, what you wanna look for is this end over here. We can say that this is maybe a 50 pixels off center. And what we would also like to do is make sure that it's at 100% scale by the time it's at the center. So here, a little bit more down, this is the end state of the animation. And I'm gonna set this to one as a scale. If we check it in the front end, you can see that the, the text ends roughly just a little bit off center. If you don't want it to start that small at the bottom of the page, if we go back into the editor, we can set the starting scale to maybe a 0.7. And if we recheck that in the front end and I scroll down, you can see that its starting point was a lot bigger. Very quick and easy thing to do. It's great to using GSAP like this. So in the editor over here, 
in this code you can change the ease into easy in out you can also set it to power in out you can set the exact starting point as well so like if you didn't want it to be 250 pixels down at the bottom you can actually set it to anything else you already have that type of control that currently in, in elemental in the motion effects you don't have that right now now let's say i wanted this picture to be set as well i can also paste that same css name onto this widget over here and it will animate it as well as long as it's in the same line you can't use the exact same code on different areas you're going to have to copy paste the code for every container you want to affect so just keep that in mind i'm going to show you that now as well because there is slight modification to that code that you're going to have to do but first let's just say on this image we wanted to affect it as well so as we scroll up and down that we want the image to also grow so in the editor we just make sure that we inside the container or the image it doesn't actually matter and we're going to make sure that under the advanced we're going to give that exact same name here so now if i publish and i go to the front and i scroll down you can see that both of them are actually working that's cool for everything being inside the same line in essence but now keep in mind that this works for this particular container here if we want to replicate this so let me just say duplicate and I'll swap these over. And then on this image, let me just take this out. Now we have two different containers that we want to affect with that same growth. We can't use the same name. So the first thing that we'd have to do is on the second container, we'd have to make sure that under advanced, the CSS name would have to change to something else. So as an example over here, this is the second container. So I'm gonna say that container to grow is two. And then in the code, I'm gonna change those things as well. So this container to grow I'm going to set it to 2 and over here as well container to grow set it to 2 and then the last thing that we have to change is this actual function name we do have to change that as well so I'm going to say set, set that to 2 and in the constant give it the exact same name so it references that we have to do this twice because otherwise if you give the same name it's going to be looking for the first containers trigger and we don't want that we only want it to affect the one that we are targeting so now if I click publish and I look in the front end and I scroll down, you can see that they are triggering on their own animation. Now we can take this into a whole other level as well. Say for example, we wanted this very first animation to have an invisible opacity and then bring it back up to one. Or if we want to move it on the X or Y axis, we can actually add that within the exact same code. We don't have to modify it too much. So what I mean by that, if I go into the page builder and I make sure that I'm in the HTML widget of the element that I'm trying to affect, if I go down to this function over here, where it says the start scale and the end scale, we can actually add things like the opacity. So I just put a comma, I say opacity, I put it to say a 0 0.3. And then in the second one, I say opacity, and I make it a one. And I make sure there's a comma behind it as well, making sure everything's spaced out. And I click publish. As I scroll down, you can see that there's that fading in effect as well as growth. If I want to say I also want to move it on the x-axis, I can say x starting point is a minus 50 pixels. And then over here, I can say x is back to where it's supposed to be, which is zero. Make sure there's a comma. I publish. And now not only does it grow and fade in, it actually moves in on the x-axis as well. So you can really go to town with this particular code. But now remember, every time that you want to add a new section with its own grow features, you do have to change the code slightly, make sure that the function name is different, as well as what you're targeting, just make sure it has its own unique CSS class name. And yes, again, this definitely does work in mobile, and I would argue that this works better in mobile than in desktop simply because you can scroll easier on the mobile. I hope you found this video quite useful. If you did, please smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. Those two things really make a big impact on a small channel like mine. And it really does help me navigate on what content to make next for you guys. If you have any suggestions or comments, then just put a link down below and let me see what I can do for you. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.